Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about integrating functions using symmetry of their graphs. So here I've got an integral, the integral of 9 minus x squared dx, it's a definite integral from x equals 0 to x equals 3, and I've got a picture of a graph and the area that is represented by this definite integral over here. So I've got my parabola, and then from x equals 0 to x equals 3, the area between the axis and the function itself. Let's go ahead and calculate this. This antiderivative here wouldn't be too difficult, and then we're going to actually look at symmetry of functions. So if I take the antiderivative of 9, the antiderivative, in other words, what would give me a derivative of 9, the answer is 9x would give me a derivative of 9. And then power rule here, right? So we say minus, the power goes up by 1 for x squared. So we get x cubed, we divide by the new power. So we get x cubed over 3 as the antiderivative for the second term. Let's go ahead and write down our bounds. So we'll evaluate this from x equals 0 to x equals 3. Remember, we'll plug in our top bound first, and then we'll subtract what we get when we plug in our bottom bound. So if we plug in 3, we'll get 9 times 3 minus... 3 cubed over 3 minus, now if we plug in 0, we'll get 9 times 0 minus 0 cubed over 3. Well, let's see. 9 times 3, that gives us 27 minus 3 cubed would be 27 divided by 3, which is 9. And then each of these, think about we get minus 0 here, minus negative, technically plus, but this is also 0 here. So we get 27 minus 9, that gives us an answer of 18. So we know that this here, this region, is actually 18 units squared of area, right? So if we were to see something like this, the definite integral now from negative 3 to 0 of the same function, if I already knew the answer from before, and I'm absolutely certain that this area over here is symmetric with this area over here, in other words, the axis cuts this in half, and I know that I have the same amount of stuff over here as I do over here, then I should also know that this equals 18, and I should also know that this area over here that this represents is also 18 units of area squared. For a function like this, that is what we call even function. It has symmetry if we fold it across the y-axis. We should additionally be able to figure out something like this integral, where we have the integral from negative 3 to 3 of the exact same function. So I know that this is 18 here and this is 18 here, so we should get an answer of double 18. In other words, all of this should be 36 square units of area. Let's say we hadn't already calculated that first integral of 0 to 3. Let's say we got this and we knew this was the shape of the graph. We didn't know that it was double 18. Another way that we could calculate this is just to take one half of this and multiply it by 2. So this definite integral here would be the same as taking the integral from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx and multiplying by 2. So sometimes you'll be asked to find an integral and there will be some symmetry and you'll notice, ah, well if I have one half here and I have this other half here, it makes my entire integral, so I could just take the half and multiply by 2. Let's look at another example here. You'll notice this function is not an even function. If I fold across the y-axis, these don't actually line up with each other from one half to the other. We have the function y equals 4x minus x cubed here. We're taking the definite integral from 0 to 2, integrating dx here. So let's find the area of this. We can go ahead and do this with a power rule for each of these terms. So we have 4 times x. Remember, the antiderivative of x, the power would go up by 1, so we'd get x squared. We divide by the new power, which is 2, but I already have a 4 out front, so 4 divided by 2 would actually give us 2 minus power rule here. The power goes up by 1. We would get x to the 4 divided by the new power, so divide by 4. And then we would plug in from 0 to 2. Remember, we plug in our upper bound first minus what we get when we plug in our lower bound. So if we plug in 2, that'll give us 2 times 2 squared, which would be 4 minus 2 to the 4th, which is 16 over 4, so that's what we get when we plug in 2, minus when we plug in 0, we get 2 times 0, that's 0, minus 0 to the 4 would be 0, divide by 4 would still be 0. We get that, so all of our value here is in the front, right? So we get 2 times 4, which is 8, 
minus 16 divided by 4, which is 4, so 8 minus 4 gives us 4. So that is the answer for this integral. If we're thinking of it as area, then we think of this as 4 square units of area. This function does have symmetry, but it's not folding symmetry. It's actually rotational symmetry. This is what we call an odd function. So think about this definite integral that represents this region of space here. If I knew that this region here that we just calculated was 4 units squared, can you tell us what this definite integral is going to give us? We'll give you a hint. This region of area is actually below the axis. So this is the exact same size as this area based on the symmetry here. So this is also 4 units squared. But now this is below the axis. So what will our actual definite integral give us? It should give us negative 4. Let's go ahead and make sure. So this is the same antiderivative we just got, right? We just got 2x squared minus x to the 4 over 4. So we don't need to overthink that. We already figured this part out. But now plugging in our bounds of negative 2 and 0, think about what's going to happen. We know when we plug in 0 to each of these, we get 0 minus 0. We already did that. Minus, now let's just be careful with our signs. Plugging in negative 2 and squaring it, I would still get a positive 4. So I get 2 times 4 there. Minus, when I take negative 2 and I take it to the fourth power, which is an even power, I get positive 16 still. So we get 16 over 4. And you can see what happens here, right? We get 0, but then we get minus there, and this is still the same 8 minus 4 we had before. So we do actually get our negative 4. So just based on the symmetry, we should be able to see, and we've checked to make sure that it's true, this would actually give us an integral of negative 4 because it's below the axis. So then what if we ask the definite integral from negative 2 to 2? of this function here. Well, I know that this is negative 4 units calculated by the integral, and I know that this is positive 4 units calculated by the integral. So because we have the same amount of area above the axis as we do below the axis, this is going to give us 0 for this integral. Let's look at another one here. We have the definite integral of cosine x dx from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So from here, that's negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, which is over there. So is there a way I could use symmetry maybe to make it easier on my calculations, possibly? Well, I think you might notice that this area here and this area here are the same, right? So this integral would actually be the same as taking the integral from, let's say, 0 to pi over 2 from the axis, everything on the right side here, and then just doubling that, right? So we could say from 0 to pi over 2, that integral cosine x dx and multiply by 2. Let's go ahead and do that to figure out this integral. So we'll have 2 out front, keep that multiple. The antiderivative of cosine x would be sine x. And now maybe it's a little easier to plug in 0 than negative pi over 2 for you, right? That might be nicer. So we'll go ahead and plug in our top bound first. Don't forget your 2. So if I plug in my upper bound, I'll just write it in. So that's sine of pi over 2. Minus, if I plug in my lower bound, that's sine of 0. And so that'll give us 2 times sine of pi over 2, that is 1, minus sine of 0, that is 0. And so 2 times 1 here actually gives us 2. So this is actually 2 total units of area, 1 on each side of the axis, right? Let's look at our last example here. We have the integral of sine x dx from 0 all the way over to 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is way over here. So if we look at some of the symmetry of what's going on here, I think you'll see a lot of things, right? So I could split each of these in half if I wanted to. But let's actually do something a little bit different than that. So if we're going from 0 all the way over to 5 pi over 2, think about this area, whatever it is, and we might know what it is already, but let's say we don't. This area and this area, notice we get the same amount of area. This one's above the axis and this one's below the axis, right? So the total that we're actually going to get from 0 to 2 pi all the way over here, this is actually going to total 0. So we'll say the integral from 0 to 2 pi of this function sine x dx is actually going to be 0. Without doing any antiderivatives, just looking at this area here, one's above and one's below, they would 0 each other out. This would be positive 
and this would be a negative calculation from this. So really what we need to just do is figure out this from 2 pi to 5 pi over 2. So you could say, let's go ahead and write this down, you could say just find the integral from 2 pi to 5 pi over 2 because the rest of that stuff is just going to give us 0 anyway, right? But now think about another way that we could use symmetry to do this. Let me go back and get rid of this here. Do you notice that this area here, I'll do it in a different color, this area actually would be the same as any of half of these, right? So let's say, for example, I don't want to use 2 pi to 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is bigger than I'm used to working with, so I want to use nicer values. So maybe you go ahead and say, well, this would be the same as this area over here from 0 to just pi over 2, and then that's quadrant 1 values, and that's much nicer. So that would be the same as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x dx. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So we'll go ahead and say negative cosine x for our antiderivative part of this. Evaluating from 0 to pi over 2. We'll plug in our upper bound first. So we'll get negative cosine of pi over 2 minus negative cosine of 0. Let's get rid of that. So then we'll go ahead and say, what is negative cosine of pi over 2? Well, cosine of pi over 2 is actually 0, so negative 0, we just get 0 there. Minus negative, we get plus there. And then what is cosine of 0? That's just 1, so we get 0 plus 1, and we get that that area of half of these is just one unit, but the entire integral from 0 all the way to 5 pi over 2 is the same value.